Continuing the James Stewart season first on BBC Two, the stars come out in force to pay tribute to the last of the good guys. In November 1997, five months after James Stewart's death, the Los Angeles authorities discussed renaming the city's main airport after the Hollywood star. Stewart was a veteran of over 80 films, including some of the greatest to emerge from Hollywood. He was also a decorated war hero. To his admirers, he was the embodiment of American values. a man you want to know something about him don't you well naturally of course well, I... keep your eyes open an overnight bag genuine english cowhide combination lock fitted up with brushes oh. combs no 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 i'll no. look joe now look i i i want a big one what'd you stop it for i want you to take a good look at that face who is it george bailey oh you mean the kid that had his ear slapped back by the druggist that's the kid Ah, it's a good face. I like it. You got the feeling that you, you know, you like the character, but you would also like to spend time with Jimmy Stewart. And uh, there's something about him that everybody liked. A man could, could say, that's my best friend. A woman could say, that's my best lover. A child could say, that's the kind of uncle I want. Apart from being a star, a very likable and endearing star persona, he was also a brilliant actor, one of the best actors of the American screen. Dear Father in heaven, I'm not a praying man, but if you're up there and you can hear me, Indiana, Pennsylvania, the self-proclaimed Christmas tree capital of the world, had a population of just 6,000 when James Stewart was growing up. The town was, Stewart said, the way all America should be. He was born in 1908, the son of Alex and Elizabeth Stewart, and although many of his screen appearances depicted an American everyman figure, Stewart's family home attests to his upper middle class origins. I'm a Presbyterian, stated Stewart, and I come from a conservative background. His father's impressive hardware store stood in the center of the town, directly opposite the county courthouse. Stewart went to military academy, then Princeton, where he studied architecture. There he became interested in acting. In a decision which defined the rest of his life, Stewart turned down graduate school to join the University Players, a theatrical troupe. When Dad was living in New York with Henry Fonda, and it was before he would obviously moved to Hollywood, and he was doing a play, and he played an Austrian count in the play. Now, this is not typecasting when you think Jimmy Stewart, Austrian count, how did they come up with that one? And after the disastrous play, just disastrous apparently, the door wouldn't open, you know, things like that. And the review the next day in the paper was, James Stewart walks across the stage like a befuddled tourist along the banks of the Danube. And I think that says it all. In 1934, an MGM talent scout sent Stuart a telegram. It read, report to Hollywood, part available with three months option on your services. Following his friend Henry Fonda, Stuart traveled west, where he became an MGM contract player. His first role was a bit part in The Murder Man, a Spencer Tracy vehicle. In the next five years, Stuart appeared in 21 films, for MGM and on loan to the other studios. Oh. Hi, Steve. Under contract to one of the big studios in those days, you worked all the time. You had tiny little parts in big pictures, and every once in a while you would get a big part in a tiny little picture. MGM experimented with their new talent, casting him in musicals, costume dramas, and even sports films. He was very good from the beginning. Even when he was very young, gangly, uh, with a great air of innocence and freshness and hope, I loved him in those films. He was just as callow and graceless as all of us, you know, when you begin. I've seen his early movie. He's not the polished 
uh, smooth uh, professional that he was uh, 20 years later, or 30 years later, or 40 years later, or whatever. He, he acquired it, and uh, he studied it. From the very outset, Stuart's face, his eyes, that wondering look, the way he listened to people, he was a great listener, it represented an idealism that Americans like to believe they have. Thank you. I, uh, I, I, I can't help feeling that there's been a big mistake somehow. <laughs> Uh, his voice is sort of a Midwestern twang uh, kind of voice, and it's, um, uh, but it's unlike any other. And, you know, many people, you know, have done uh, imitations of it, they, you know, and some great ones, but um, it just is uh, the way it is, but it sums up a, a sort of an American uh, man and uh, just comes out of him naturally that way. He fairly early on got this sort of reputation for being inarticulate and yet rambly. He would go on and on and never quite make the point. Um, I think it was a very cunningly, carefully worked out thing. I, I, I think when he wanted to be, the arms and the ahs fell away from his dialogue and fell away from his speech in private. It was a mannerism that he, he knew was attractive. In 1939, the director Frank Capra cast Stewart as the naively idealistic Senator Jefferson Smith. It was that part, more than any other, which first defined Stewart's on-screen image. Excuse me. Hey, Smith became an icon of free-thinking American liberal values. Throughout the rest of his career, Stewart was inextricably linked with the character, whether or not his own political outlook matched that of the film. There's a deep, deep feeling in America that the original, authentic, ideals and values that inspired the country in the late 18th century still hold. And there's no reason to modernize, there's no reason to bring them up to date with social engineering and one thing or another, that ethically those things still obtain. Liberty is too precious a thing to be buried in books, Miss Saunders. Men should hold it up in front of them every single day of their lives and say, I'm free think and to speak. My ancestors couldn't. I can. And my children will. Boys ought to grow up remembering that.